go get water and when I come back, the people I was with showed me and he was laying down and did it. Oh, that was the first death I saw in a dome. That wasn't even, I don't understand that. That was two days after we went there. He jumped off and killed himself. He had a lot of people emotionally just cracking up. Yeah. I mean, I would be sitting there just like me and Harold said, now I'd be sitting here talking to him and come back an hour later and he done lost his mind. Right? He'd been sitting there talking to himself. That was going on every day, all day. Just, I mean, you, you got to understand, you're sitting around people laying on the ground too weak to get up. Yeah. Literally dying right there on the ground. Did anyone try to attack you physically? No, I never had no problems. I had one one problem I had with a guy I was sitting for the last few days. At nighttime, before they put us out on the ledges, you didn't even want to walk out there. It, like I said before, if you ever saw a movie that was over-exaggerated, like take Menace to Society, for example. You think it's over exaggerated? Just made that look like a PG-13 movie. There were sections when you went outside. Every project was gathered on this ledge. So now you had territorial gangs fighting. They were fighting pit bulls for money. They were spinning dice. They had point. They had places. Men. This man took me and showed me right where you walk through. I mean, I walked through shadows of death. I didn't fear nothing because I put my faith in the law, right? I watched people fighting with no gloves on, nothing for money. They had piles of money. They were taking their shirts off and fist fighting. All right, we watch. I watched stabbings up there. I watched, like I said, they were fighting pit bulls for money. All right, all this the military. I don't understand why they didn't stop it. All right, they. I seen an ambulance. So the military was, was watching that go on too. Yeah, they were watching that going. It was scared too. All right, I watched people get shot with the beanbag guns. A beanbag gun, all right. I watched with a shotgun with a beanbag shell in it, all right. I watched ambulances coming in and putting people in the ambulance. And when they'd be going out, we had rain so cloud, but it didn't the, oh, the, the, the night of the storm, three parts of the roof got ripped off. I mean, you could hear the wind hitting, hitting. And I heard rumors that they found all kind of bullet holes from the people shoot, drop, bullets dropping right in the dome. But the roof got ripped off from the wind damage. That was the night of the storm. The next day, the sun was out. It was sunny that whole week after that. And but, did they make y'all stand outside on the ledge? Two days. Two days. I could actually. The last two days? I could show you my ID. And how? Well, I got, went to Texas. I evacuated to Texas when we got up there in shelters. This is how sunburnt I was from being on the ledge for two days. That's All right, that's, really burnt. That's it. That's a Texas, that's the IDs they gave us when we got to Texas. You, well, you look almost as red as the red part on the top. Yeah, I was, that's, that's, everybody was sunburned. The but ledges were approximately how big? Probably 30 foot in width, and then the length went all the way around the dome. Really so you had 30 down. foot right there, that, that caught with 65,000 people in a 30 foot area. And they kept you on half of that, you couldn't go in the back section, that was like on a half of the dome right there. He had people right there. I mean, it was like that. One guy came by me. Don't get me wrong. I watched the military. If they caught them with alcohol, they would take that alcohol and bust it right there on a the cement. For an example, I was standing there the last day, and a guy come by me, and they were selling like shots of vodka that they stole off the sweets for so much a shot. And then a guy walked right in front of me and passed out, dehydrated from drinking. The military ran up, pump, I'm watching it right there, put IVs in his arm, blood shooting everywhere, mm -hmm. right? And they pumped bags of fluids in him. And the guy woke up and he looked at me, and I was the last person he saw before he passed out. And he said, you stole my gallon of vodka? I said, your gallon of vodka? You almost died a minute ago, right? He said, you don't need no more vodka. He, he looked at me again, he said, and the military was standing right there. I said, your vodka's right there broke. You understand? I said, the military broke your vodka. And he uh, he accused me of taking his vodka. That was the only problem I had. And I had some other people behind me that told him, you need to get out of here. He didn't take your vodka. You know, and that, that died right there. But uh, as far as the, as far as the rumors everybody are hearing about the killings and all, yes, it definitely went on. And I don't understand why. I mean, I don't know. I can't answer that. I can't answer why they left us in there for a week. I know one thing, that was the only part of the state that people had left there that long, a period of time.
stuff. He said he found a lot. Some people were just freaking out. Freaking and then out. were other people praying? Oh, or, it, got, it definitely did. Like I said, I was in a ministry before this. I was actually teaching out of the Bible. And it was a part of Revelations fulfilled right in front of me. They had, they had so many powerful Christians in there. They had a lady that walked around. And she would pray and walk around and yell, Jesus. She would hit straight for the bombs. When she heard they were fighting or this and that, she would hit straight for them and start praying, praying in tongues. And it was so powerful. You had to be there and feel the spirit, right? And then it would die down for a little while. Actually, I was there the morning. We heard it on the radio when Ray Nagin, our, the mayor of New Orleans, made the accusation. I'm sure the whole United States heard it when he started crying on the air. Yes, said, I did. I, he said, I don't want to hear no more BS. Let's get them out of here. And he started crying. He, he said, said, where is the help that you're supposed to where be Where is saying? the help? This is people dying. Bush. He was screaming at Bush. Screaming at Bush and he cursed him out. Yes he, yes, he did. Yes. All right. And I was there. I started crying that morning when he said that.